Now let's move on to the brand new stuff that is gonna decorate this same circuit a little differently, but still have dopamine come out at the end. And this is pro, I'm saying pro as opposed to anti. Procholinergic, this is stimulation of acetylcholine, not blockade of it. So if anybody's got sharp eyes, they're gonna see a little thing in the brainstem where it says ACH neuron, acetylcholine neuron, that's new. And we didn't know it was there before. Now we've talked a little bit about the other guys at the cortex at the top. You see this what I call a triptych. You got a glutamate pyramidal neuron in orange talking to a GABA neuron in purple talking to the third one, which is another glutamate. And that sucker comes all the way down to the brainstem. And there are two parallel pathways, one for positive symptoms and one for negative symptoms. We'll do the positive first, the psychosis circuit. If that glutamate comes down, we already showed you that, and, and stimulates the blue guy, that's going to make your dopamine go up. So we think there's something wrong in schizophrenia neurodevelopmentally in the cortex that makes the connection between the first and the second nerve up there not work right. It's at an NMDA or N-methyl aspartate receptor, and it's hypofunctional. And if that means that therefore the first guy doesn't stimulate the second guy, so therefore GABA is not Stimulated. If GABA is not stimulated, what's going to happen to the third one? No inhibition? Disinhibition! That's also called turning it on. And then that glutamate's going to go down and kick that old dopamine in the blue, and out comes dopamine, and you have delusion, hallucination, thought disorder, positive symptoms. So we think that the reason that the blue goes up in the, in the striatum is because there's a hypofunctional connection in the cortex. That's called a circuit. So the downstream consequences are from an upstream abnormality. Well, guess what? There's also another little sucker that's in this pathway. It's a little cholinergic neuron that goes and talks to this same dopamine neuron, and it applies tone all the time. It's not abnormal in schizophrenia, but acetylcholine is stimulating a little bit all the time, putting pressure on that dopamine neuron. It turns out that that neuron has a postsynaptic cholinergic receptor and a presynaptic one. And this is where it's going to stand you on your head. <laughs> we are going to stimulate and yet inhibit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stimulate a presynaptic M4 receptor. Why do you care? That will turn off this sucker because the M4 receptor lives on the presynaptic neuron. If you stimulate it, release is stopped. And you should care about that a lot and understand it a lot. Because if you put an M4 agonist in your brain, it will turn that guy off. And we have now proven in a really kind of revolutionary way that that is enough loss of baseline tone to actually decrease psychosis. Why the hell would an acetylcholine agonist make psychosis better, this is the slide that would explain that. So M1 agonists, because some of the drugs for acetylcholine and schizophrenia are not just M4 agonists, we'll talk about that. M4 is a muscarinic 4 type receptor. They're also muscarinic type 1s. They live in a different place. They live on those same sick GABA interneurons and can activate them. Well, you expect if they activate them, that would work. Through a series of steps, this takes excessive glutamate's foot off the brakes and increases dopamine release in the mesocortical pathway. So it does look that this could be a pro-cognitive, a pro-negative symptom, even a pro-affective. And wait, you know, this is a brand new mechanism. I've been around for 40 years in this field and I have yet to see a new mechanism come into the field where the first indication by the drug company was the best and the only one. God only, this is going to be fun for you guys and gals because you're going to get this drug and you're going to start using it. You're going to say, you know, it certainly works as advertised for, for uh, positive symptoms. But, you know, I think it works for whatever uh, PTSD symptoms or eating disorder or God, F, you know, who knows? <laughs> who knows what acetylcholine does in the brain? <laughs> and so it's going to be a rich possible way of having fun. So this pathway I've already shown you in a way. It's a little bit different. This is the parallel pathway, which goes down. You see in the brainstem, there's a GABA interneuron, which is why you end up having the dopamine go low in schizophrenia. And then there's that little thing, looks like a little bit like a cane that's hooked around there. 
that's a cholinergic neuron that's coming in to talk to that sick synapse on the purple one. So here we got the purple one that's sick between the number one and number two nerve up there, that triptych I told you about. And it's, I'm gonna go through it again. This guy gets low, and in this case, glutamate goes up, but it's going in a parallel pathway to a GABA interneuron, which actually goes to those neurons that don't go to the striatum, they go to the cortex and drives them down. This is why you have, we think, negative and cognitive symptoms. So if you put an M1 agonist on that sick purple neuron, light that sucker up, now he is going to inhibit this guy, which will then not stimulate glutamate and GABA down in the brainstem, which will then release and ah, dopamine <laughs> gets delivered. And so that is the theory of why it could be pro-cognitive and good for negative symptoms.